Hey everyone, and welcome to the Gymnashack Conference. I'm Steve Burge, and I'm your host for this event over the three days. And if we were going to pinpoint one of the sessions as a keynote for the conference, I'm going to embarrass George and say this would probably be it. He's a modest guy, but you're going to hear about Joomla 4 from one of the guys who is central to building it. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to have George with us here. He's going to take us through an explanation of Joomla 4's power and capabilities. George, welcome. Cool. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you're right. I don't think it's quite the keynote, but uh, we'll make a start. Cool. So if those of you who have not come across me, I am a consultant engineer at a company called Automation Logic. So my full-time job is in DevOps, uh, building servers for the government, most recently on Brexit-related projects, which means I've just come down and got a three-month extension from busy work. For my Joomla involvement, I have been on the production team, or PLT as it used to be called, from 2014 to the start of this year when I've taken a bit of a break from the leadership roles and I am the release lead for Joomla 4 which is why I'm here to tell you guys how amazing it's going to be. Uh, that's largely me. So uh, most important thing is if you guys do have questions or anything like that and you think of after this is all over or Steve doesn't pick your questions or whatever, then please feel free to come find me. I'm available on GitHub, email, Glip, and I will do my best to get back to you and answer your questions. Yeah. So uh, let's start at the start. Uh, the, in some ways, we're the community that likes to bash ourselves the most. We like to think that we're second best, falling fast, and all the rest of it. And I think sometimes, well, I, my personal opinion is, is that this should be addressed head on, which is that every major CMS is falling off in market share. And if I show you a different graph and look at what the UK looks like, then yes, Joomla is not as strong as it used to be, but it's not WordPress that we should be worried about. It's self-hosted sites, your Wixes, your Squarespaces, your Shopify's self-hosted platforms, other things on the rise. So in terms of does Joomla need to be WordPress? The answer is no. Joomla needs to have a strong base platform. And if people want to see Joomla having a massive market share, what we need to do is have appealing extensions that appeal to people to build base platforms, self-hosted platforms on Joomla. If that's how we want, if market share is our aim. So with that in mind, I'm gonna talk a bit about what we have in Joomla what we're doing in Joomla 4, why we're doing it, how we're getting there, and kind of the future. So in Joomla 3, what do we have? We've got a top class multi-link system. We've got uh, support for content, categories, tags, versioning, hundreds of configuration options, really high quality code base compared to a large number of CMSs well-tested and relatively secure just over time because we're still the second largest CMS in the world, so we still have a big X painted on our back. And we've got thousands of extensions that sit in JED, which is the real jewel in Joomla's crown. And we've got a really nice responsive backend interface. We seem to forget these days that we were the first people to do that. So um, alongside our CMS, we have the ecosystem around it. So we built our own issue tracker, which um, if you talk to a lot of CMSs, and I kind of go around to quite a few meetups in London and the people that know Joomla, some of them are more envious of our GitHub issue tracker than they are, at the, you know, because obviously they're competitors, they don't want to say the product's better. So they say the issue tracker's nice because they want something that integrates nicely with GitHub too, that's nice for users. And uh, most importantly, we have a really, really good volunteer community. We have people not just doing code on the right, uh, but we also have large numbers of documentation people, people managing the forum, people managing blog posts about what's going on in the community. We have like a really, really strong community. And the reason I put staging, by the way, in the big red box there is because you shouldn't be fussed that there are less commits happening to Joomla right now. We've got 
probably more than we've had for a while, but it only looks at GitHub only looks at the default branch, which is the Joomla 3 branch. It does not take into account Joomla 4. The minute we merge into Joomla 4, you're going to see the number of commits over the last year skyrocket. So I think I kind of recapped a bit about Joomla 3, what we've got, what we've got as assets going for us. And of course, I'll also be the first to admit that we didn't get everything right. For sure, we made some of our releases a bit buggy and various things like that. So in 2014, we came up with this kind of development plan to kind of formalize how we wanted to release it and kind of stabilize the system a bit more and stop it being so ad hoc. So we implemented semantic versioning, which meant major and minor patch releases. Majors meant these big, we could make big backwards compatibility breaks, although not necessarily big, but any backwards compatibility breaks. Minors mean no backwards compatibility breaks, but features and patch releases should just be bugs and should be relatively safe upgrades. Uh, we decided we were going to release monthly, although in the last year or two, that's moved to every six weeks. And we try and release on Tuesdays so that everyone can expect the release. And especially when there's security patches and stuff, that's good for you guys because it means that you know when to expect the releases. We always try and tag on the GitHub tracker a release with a date so that people always know weeks in advance when to expect a release and they can then security patch accordingly. For the last three or four years now, we've also always released a release candidate a week before every release so that people can test. And the aim of that is obviously to ensure that there are less buggy releases running around. This latest version of the roadmap can always be found on the developer site and the full development plan on also on the developer site. You guys, uh, I'll send these slides to Steve afterwards so you guys can find the links afterwards. So bearing in mind, we now have a definition of kind of the only reason why we build a major release is to have BC breaks that we feel are necessary. I guess the next question we need to think about when we're building a new major version is kind of what's our target market? And of course, that's a complicated question that has a lot of people have a lot of different answers for, and there's no one solution fits all thing. Personally, I quite liked um, this from Path. He wrote this blog post a few years ago now, looking at the various different bits that feed into Joomla core. So extension developers, template developers, agencies who are building sites with Joomla, and system integrators building kind of smallest one-man band sites. And he considered those the four things that we needed to target aggressively. These days, you can even consider bigger companies, I think, like, uh, like I said, self with the rise of self-hosted sites, I think there's an element that you should be targeting as well. Self-hosted sites have kind of a self-hosted platform that people can see as a prime example of the use of Joomla. But you kind of get a feel that it kind of covers everything. We're looking at extension developers and tentate developers to kind of appeal Joomla more and um, it's kind of system integrators and consulting agencies for people who build Joomla sites. So if I put that into kind of three marketing goals for Joomla, that would be saying we're building a platform to make extensions easy to build in a secure way. I think the last part of that is very relevant compared to um, other CMSs. Sometimes it's drop dead easy to build something, but it's not necessarily secure. And I think one of the things Joomla does very well is it makes things secure out of the box or as secure as it can. Obviously, anyone can do anything if they want. These extensions should be customizable, extensible, and integrate cleanly with each other. Again, the integrate cleaning with each other thing is like also something that Joomla does much better than, um, I, to me, my experience with WordPress especially. When you start to install extensions that work with each other on WordPress, often it can start to go wrong a lot quicker than it can in Joomla, in my personal experience. And site administrators should be able to add content with ease and without needing to pay for large amounts of custom training. I think that's three fairly simple goals, nothing particularly in people's faces, but it just gives a guidance as to where the features we need to be looking at and the kind of improvements Joomla needs to be making. So Joomla 4 specifically, it kind of started getting talked about in 2015 now, which seems crazy. Nick Dianopoulos wrote a series of blog posts thinking about Joomla 4 with feature ideas, visions, marketing audiences. And then in Jab in 2015, which I think that year was Prague, 
group of us sat it down during the make it happen session to discuss the vision. And we came up with this, which is this uh, kind of ceremonial thing that all, a lot of the development since has gone on to. And of course, some things had chopped and changed a little bit. And some things went into June the 3, some things didn't, but it gives you an idea that I reckon we've done 80% of the stuff, maybe even 90% of the stuff that we put on this four years ago, which is good. So June the 4, eliminate deprecated code so that there is one way of doing things. One of the things that we've fallen into not having had a major since June the 3 back in 2013 is, is that there is been a lot of change in our code base, which is to be expected for any software project. But often now there's in some ways two and in a handful of cases, sometimes even three ways of doing things, which is obviously crazy. And we need to go back to a place of having one way to do things. So it's easier for developers who have not got experience with Joomla before to come in and have a defined way of doing things and well documented too. Try and make the admin interface more user friendly it was good in 2013 to use Bootstrap. I mean, the fact, as I said before, we were the first people to have a responsive admin interface. However, the world's moved on and Bootstrap out of the box is no longer considered the most user-friendly thing. And related to kind of more front-end related things, improving SEO and accessibility, especially the latter is a big stumbling block for getting Joomla into the doors of um, bigger companies and enterprises. And in some countries, it's just a blocker outright. Um, in Israel, for example, you need to have an AA accessible website. It's the, the law. Standardized on Joomla framework packages, they're better tested, they've had small tweaks made, and also means that we're not maintaining two packages of the same thing. Upgrade from Bootstrap 2 to Bootstrap 4, and various features of which I think to a, a good number of people, web services, probably one of the biggest ones, but Obviously, there's many that we're implementing that may require small BC breaks within core. So it's the coming towards the end of 2019. So, um, you know, you would hope we're making good progress after four years, and I'm happy to say we are. Joomla is much easier to install. There were far too many options in the installer. Site integrators now have um, a much better experience to install Joomla. There are now three much simpler steps. And yeah, I reckon Joomla can be installed on the server in under two minutes. When I'm doing it, and I've been doing it for a long time now, I can do it in about 30 to 45 seconds because I know it inside and out. So this is a screenshot of the new installer. That's step one. And step two and step three are equally simple. So I hope you guys can uh, appreciate that it is a significantly uh, simplified experience on what we've had before. So uh, in a similar vein, we have a new backend template. Priority being on getting quick links in, making sure people know they're up to date and that kind of thing. And to an extent, dropping the less important things off so that people can focus on their content creation, which is why articles and categories and media are given kind of the forefront. Yeah. Joomla is also trying to be more supportive. I'm gonna give an example. Uh, our security team get multiple emails a week about people who can't log into their sites or can't reset their password, and they don't seem to have anything better to do than email the security team to help them get back into their site, which is obviously not helping them, it's not helping us to have to deal with the emails, and it generally causes stress for everyone involved. So as an example, here's the Joomla 4 login page, and you can see we've added in new things for about what had to do if you've got your login details, how, where places to find support, and obviously the support box there is um, not in red in the real site. And the links there are in a module so that you can customize them and point people to your personal site if you maintain sites for people and you're managing them. And for people who are less knowledgeable, they have the default Joomla links. And the Forgot Your Login Details page takes you directly to our existing documentation page about how to reset passwords. As I said, when I talked about the dashboard a bit, uh, Joomla is aiming to make your life easier to make content because ultimately when you have a content management system, your aim is to make content. The clues 
kind of in the name. So one of the things we've done to try and make people's lives easier is to create a system dashboard. And the aim is to provide this separation between administering Joomla and producing content. So if you're producing content, you should be using the main menu on the left. And if you're trying to administer Joomla, then you know whether that's installing languages, changing the global config, installing extensions, changing user access, all these things now belong in the system dashboard. So they're kind of hidden away a bit. The other thing you can see we've done is um, you can see the ticks and the warning symbols on the right hand side of some of the items there. There's now kind of a feedback system so people can see what items need actioning. So it's more obvious to users in a single overview what, if anything, needs to be done. Another thing we've tried to do for content creators is uh, simplify workflows. So we've now created the, the long fabled uh, save to menu button, which uh, saves your article and immediately creates a menu item pre-filling all the menu boxes with your article that you've just saved. And yeah, there's a few things like that we've done to try and make the, the flow of creating content more harmonious and like easier. Kind of a bigger feature we put in is something called workflows. And this is about how best to publish content. In larger teams, there's often an approvals process for any sort of content change on your, on your websites. And even in like smaller startups, for example, like uh, where I used to work, we used to have our head of marketing review all the blog posts that went onto our company site before it got published. And so we've kind of introduced this concept called workflows to help kind of formalize this into, a, into the CMS obviously in a fairly optional way. So the default workflow in Joomla is what it always used to be. That's publish, unpublish, archive, trash. However, if you wanted to have a review system before you have an article, you can uh, configure something simple. You can uh, say an article is in draft when it gets created. And rather than have the publish, unpublish buttons on the right, you can see that we've now got um, a status button which uh, allows me to take my article out of draft and put it into ready to review. And um, when it's in ready to review, it's still unpublished, as you can see. And eventually, but once uh, someone in the ready to review pile has reviewed it, it can then be published. And obviously, um, I've also configured it so the article can be trashed at any time if I decide that my draft was terrible or whatever reason. So these are relevant screens. You can see this is the transition to take something from ready to review. You can see there's a, it takes the current stage from draft and targets it into the, well, in this case, I've called it the same name as the transition, which is ready for review. You could also call it in review or something like that. And importantly, of course, to execute that transition, there is an ACL uh, box, which means that, say, for example, I can create a marketing group in Joomla and uh, say that only those people are allowed to move it from ready to review to published, for example. And that's the main aim of uh, workflows. So you can build however many stages um, in terms of drafts. You could say draft, marketing, legal, my boss sign off, whatever have you, until published. And as many of those can be published or unpublished as you like. There's also um, events thrown, plugins. So for example, when it moves from draft to ready to review, you can email all the people in your previous group to say, please review this blog post and tap, you know, mark it ready to move to the next stage. So there's a lot of possibilities that this opens. And again, there's always the Joomla default workflow there. So if this sounds like it's overkill for your site, don't worry, you're not really going to notice a difference. Another thing that we put a huge amount of work into is Media Manager. I know huge numbers of people install other Joomla extensions. I think JC is probably the main one, but things in some cases just to override the Media Manager. And in Joomla 4, we've aimed to change this and we've completely rebuilt it. There's like not a line of code left that's the same. So the interface is significantly cleaner than it was before. And it's also been fully rebuilt into um, basically a JavaScript application with an API behind it. And there's also um, additional features to edit some media as well. 
So you can now do basic image manipulation, cropping, scaling, resizing, rotating, and changing the quality of the image. Um, dependent on you having the uh, image GD library from PHP installed, which is required for any sort of image manipulation, unfortunately, in PHP. This, uh, obviously, you also have the same view in the media modal, and this is also plugin based. So as the internet's evolved a bit since when Joomla started, uh, not everything just sits on your site anymore. A lot of people now use CDNs for media. And uh, because this is now plugin based, although the default is still the file system, you can also add in um, extra plugins to say connect to an Amazon S3 bucket or a Azure uh, storage area or any CDN you like where you might also host uh, images or videos that you might display on your website. And you can still do the same um, image editing transactions there too. A uh, further feature that we've also been working on is something we're calling mail templates. This allows uh, customizing the email sent within Joomla. Part of the aim of this actually is um, a bit to spice up the email extension ecosystem. I know there's, um, with the MailChimp price changes that have happened recently, there's a lot of uncertainty about basically what the right email providers to use are. Um, I know, for example, my girlfriend who owns this, uh, a startup has moaned to me about what happened with MailChimp. And um, it's kind of, this came along at the same time, it was an interesting match. Basically, it allows you to customize the emails that Joomla sends out. So rather than just being hard-coded text strings, you can now actually make them genuine HTML templates, which obviously opens up a lot of flexibility. And there's still the same kind of hooks that there were before. There's still a bit of UX work to go on this. As you can tell, it doesn't look the prettiest right now but the, the bare bones are pretty powerful. It allows you to also obviously edit in text and that kind of thing, which is required if you're talking about shop products. So you can insert in uh, products from shops that people have bought and stuff like that on the fly. Uh, yeah. In the front end, uh, one of the other things we've done is we've tried to move ourselves um, slightly away from summer bootstrap. And one example of that is CSS Grid. This is uh, a native grid system for CSS that runs in the browser. And the cool thing about this is, is that you build up um, grid areas. So this is an example that I pulled straight from the official spec. And it basically has, as you can see, a game layout. And you can see on the left-hand side, it's defined in CSS areas. And the cool thing about it is, is that because they're using media queries, they can actually basically build alternate layouts depending on the orientation of the screen. And if you want to try and think about how this might be useful in Joomla, there are multiple ways. I think that probably the most obvious is if you think about rearranging the way that modules wrap around your component based on screen rotation, things like left and right menus on Mac mobiles and that kind of thing. Because obviously it's not just orientation, you can do it on media queries, you can for so page size, you can do it on, um, just classes as well. So one of the other cool things that we've done is, is that in the category blog, there's now several layouts without changing any of the HTML, which you can change just by modifying the classes. And so you can change category blog from being kind of a static thing to masonry to various different things, um, which is down to some really cool work by Kieran. As I said earlier, accessibility is really important at the moment, both in the world and just for us, because Part of the really nice thing about being a community is, is that we want to be inclusive and welcoming to as many people as we can. And of course, that includes people who might have disabilities. And so as a result, we set out right from the off to make Joomla 4 comply with the Web Contents Accessibility Guideline uh, AA standard. We've generated reports internally for both back end and front end, which we're slowly working our way through and trying to fix things. And yeah, this is super relevant at the moment because government and increasingly corporates are requiring this. And in some more progressive countries as well, they're even going as far as making a requirement for all websites. And I can see that can continuing in the future. In a similar line of making Joomla available to as many people as possible, where we don't discriminate and we also are opening it up to the machines and the internet of things. 
So think about making your text on your blog post accessible so that Alexa can uh, answer it as someone else's question. You want to be the answer on your website to as many different types of content as you can. From Alpha 7, we introduced an API. And from Alpha 12, this API now covers nearly all components in core. There's a handful that we're deliberately leaving off for now, um, things like being ed able to edit uh, user permissions and that kind of thing, because until this beds in, probably letting people modify security settings isn't the smartest idea, just practically speaking. The screen on the right here is some examples in Postman. There's a lot of cool work still going on with this. The API is probably still the most influx thing we've got in Joomla at the moment, because there's a lot of people that are just starting to test it and experiment with the power and try and make it all work, but it's really cool. And there's been four, sorry, three GSOC projects and four GSOC students who have worked on this. Um, they've all done a really cool job. This is really nice. On a more technical thing, we've also improved the CLI interface. We are now using the, um, Symphony console package uh, in order to make it appear and style much nicer and validate options and stuff much nicer. There's also um, a few new commands available for user management and that kind of thing, which should help people that run uh, host uh, sites for clients and stuff to manage them. So having gone through a, in rapid fire a huge number of features, I guess, with all things with Joomla major versions, there's always this question of how painful migrations are gonna be and what you need to do. So, probably the biggest pain point is gonna be a migration from Bootstrap 2 to Bootstrap 4 because it's gonna largely require you to do things with your template unless your template overrides the entire, the entire Bootstrap 2 already in every single view. If you're an extension developer, that almost certainly means you're going to need to make changes to support both versions at the same time if you want to in, uh, support Joomla 3 and Joomla 4. On a related version, if you're a site owner, you're going to need to update your extensions to the latest versions because nearly every extension uses some deprecated code somewhere. We've marked all our deprecated code out. and We haven't basically added any deprecations for the last six to eight months now, aside from in a few minor places. Like most of our deprecations were done a year ago, so extension developers, we're giving them as much time as we can, but obviously there's always gonna be some people that wait until the beta or the release can step before they start looking because they want to see it as stable as possible. So I'm sure at some point, those of you who kind of like to install an extension, let the support expire and then come back to it at some point, are probably gonna to need to buy that extension and uh, that package again and just get us a, a new update. In terms of updating extensions, we're trying to make this visualizing thing super easy for people. And I'll show you that on the next slide through Joomla 3.10. I have a typo that Joomla 3.10 will be supported for two years after Joomla 4 comes out because we're going to release Joomla 3.10 as a, at the same time as Joomla 4 in order to kind of give a, what a, hopefully a 3.10 platform that people, extension developers can run to have one version of Joomla 3 and Joomla 4 run. So we're gonna try and backport some parts of Joomla 4 into Joomla 3.10 in order to kind of make it easier for extension developers to support both platforms at the same time. And also therefore people's ability to upgrade from one version to the other so they don't have to kind of update an extension and the core at the same time. But yeah, you have time to plan your migration. We support Joomla 3 for two years after Joomla 4 comes out. However, don't leave it till the last minute either because for obvious reasons, you can't just do a major version upgrade and upgrade your template and your extensions in like two weeks. This is what the Joomla 3.10 update screen now looks like. As you can see, we're checking for all the basic things PHP versions, MySQL versions, that kind of thing. And we're also checking for third-party extension updates. This screenshot's like a couple of years old now. So um, back then, basically, no one supported this um, update check thing. Um, that's changed a bit. But yeah, this is going to be hopefully uh, all in one way for you to see what extensions do and don't support your updates. You can see the patch tester is the best example. And there'll be no yes buttons for everything. So 
uh, my talk was about Joomla 4. And obviously in Joomla, there is more than just Joomla 4.0. Joomla 4.0 is the start of a long journey of Joomla 4. And GSOC 2019 this year started to look beyond what 4.0 has because we're already starting to look as a production team about things that want to go into 4.1, 4.2, because that's sensible management, I guess. Um, so we're working in a cross CMS group that's uh, with Google as well on an auto update feature for Joomla, opt-in obviously. Building a drag and drop page builder style application for templates, which will allow you to make custom or dynamic module positions in your template. We're working on guidelines for Joomla extensions to be accessibility compliant because obviously on a real life Joomla site, it's all well and good Joomla core shipping with accessibility, but it's no good if none of your extensions are accessible. You're only as good as the weakest element on your site. And we also continue the API work. The API work, the, all the, most of the extensions in Joomla that have an API was done in this year's GSOC as well. So all that being said, uh, volunteers are obviously the bedrock of our community and we're always on the lookout for, um, yeah, I forgot about that. Need more volunteers to help us finish always people to test, people to write patches. There's still lots of people that are writing, you know, pull requests for small bugs and stuff that have crept in as we've tried to refactor things and make things better. Um, but it's not just code, it's writing more tests, working on the API, uh, marketing and documentation. If code is not your specialty, don't worry. There's lots of things we can do to help with with documentation and marketing. And of course, it would even be really nice if we could give uh, the main Joomla.org site a small overhaul for the Joomla 4 release as well. So if anybody wants to help with anything, whether it's code or not, please feel free to approach and I can try and either point you to a team that can help if you don't want to write on code or if you want to write on code, I can point you in the direction of things that need to. So uh, with that being said, Joomla 4 is coming soon. And um, yeah, I hope you really like the release when it comes. Um, we're aiming to have a beta out at the end of this month. So that means no more features and we start to really, really work on the stabilization and the documentation and all that kind of thing. That's my lot. Well, that was awesome. Thanks, George. So I'm going to open it up to questions from the chat. Quite a few of them you answered during the during the presentation, such as how intensive will the changes be for extension and uh, uh, and template developers. Template okay. developers, I think, in some ways, most of template clubs these days override Bootstrap two to Bootstrap three and Bootstrap four. So. I to an extent, I think template developers are some of the least affected. I mean, about, what was it, a year or two ago, I helped you guys with your template, and it was took me about half a day to make things work again. Okay, we managed to get a lot of Brexit jokes in there. Like, uh, <laughs> like will Joomla 5 be out before Brexit is finished? Um, yeah, don't, please. A uh, couple of questions about uh, SEO. Do you have any... Uh, any more details on the SEO changes for metadata or f perhaps for images as well? For images? Yeah, a couple of people asked about the media manager and whether there's uh, any improvement to the way images are handled. So out of the box, there is no changes. However, obviously being able to edit quality and stuff like that will allow you to lighten images that have been uploaded onto your server. We're not planning on auto resizing images as part of core because I think it's going to hinder more people than it helps. However, that being said, there's now a whole bunch of new plugin events available. So I would imagine that there's a lot of third party extensions that will come out and take advantage of some of this to provide that functionality in the future. Question about more about Bootstrap 4 perhaps than Joomla. What does Bootstrap 4 do with uh, jQuery? Does it have a complete replacement? Does it still use some jQuery? Bootstrap 4 still uses jQuery. Bootstrap 5 is not going to use jQuery. However, Bootstrap 5 is still pre-alpha, and it's very unlikely it's going to come out before Joomla 4 comes out. Maybe there'll be an alpha or something. Who knows? As a result, in core, 
kind of we're working on trying to reduce our coupling to JavaScript. We're using custom elements in a lot of places where Bootstrap JavaScript was used before. In the front end template, for example, the only thing in the entire front end that's using Bootstrap's JavaScript and hence jQuery is the main menu. If you substituted the main menu out, you'd find that only the Bootstrap CSS file got loaded, not even the JavaScript. Whether okay. Bootstrap JavaScript and J jQuery. Do you have any advice for people that might be considering Joomla for, for headless work? Does the, the new API, for example, provide any help for people that might want to create a headless website with Joomla? Yeah, I mean, it depends kind of what headless thing you're doing. It's the API is not covering everything yet. Like I said, probably for front end static site, if you want to take content down and build, generate like a front end static site, it's already probably good enough. If you want to start putting in dynamic things like being able to edit front-end edit articles and stuff like that starts to become a bit more complicated. There's no like batch action support and that kind of thing yet. I mean, but there's intention. So for 4.0, it's probably, you could probably do it, but it's going to be a push. But obviously as the 4 series progresses and the API progresses, it should become progressively easier to build a headless CMS if you wanted to go that way. Okay. Uh, the SEO improvements, not just about images, perhaps with uh, metadata for articles as well. So the long and short of it is, is that not a lot has changed beyond just trying to just tweak the things we have. I have looked at and have a kind of dabbled around with um, the concept of uh, schema.org metadata. So one of the things that people are doing at the moment is um, schema.org for their metadata which basically means you have a big JSON blob in your head rather than doing it inside the body. And the advantage is that it's much easier to validate and it's much easier to show if things are right or wrong. But it comes with cons such as the fact that because it's in a fairly fixed format, if you wanted to modify things a bit, you'd probably have to do it as a plugin rather than being able to edit templates. Um, having said that, with Juma being split over so many templates, it's hard to say whether that's a good or a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, so the, the concept exists of having um, schema metadata, but it's not being merged yet. But it's a, something I've got a pull request on, so I'd be interested to know if people are interested in that or whether they consider it too complicated. Okay, I have a, a question from me. And being selfish, I'm going to make this the last one. You guys have been working hard on Joomla for, for years now. Looking back, looking at something that's in a beta version that's getting close to being the finished product. Which feature are you most proud of? Which one was the most difficult and the most rewarding to get done or which one is the coolest? If there's one feature you could highlight and say, oh man, I'm, I'm glad we did that and did it well. What would it be? I don't know. I mean, and probably I'm going to cheat and pick two. Okay. So just as a general Joomla usability thing, I think the thing that was most important for Joomla is the media manager because it was such an obvious weakness of the product. Me personally, because I ran all the GSOC projects, I'm a big API fan. I'm a coder at heart, after all. Um, so I'm very proud of the API and the work that the students put into it. And Because we set out a, f a big feature and kind of, executed it in a way that I think a lot of other Joomla features could deal with. That we published documentation up front. We wrote down the decision process we made as we went so that people can go back in the future and have a look and look at why we made decisions that we did, even if they don't agree with them. So cool. that's my kind of two features. Wonderful, George. Well, you guys have done such excellent work uh, over several years to bring this to fruition and um... Be There's been a helpful. lot of people that are involved. It's not a solo effort. There's a huge number of people that have done a lot of work and deserve a lot of thanks. Indeed. And uh, we really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. Cool. Um, and thanks to all of you guys that stayed around and uh, listened to George often late in the evening for you and ask questions. We have one more session at the Joomla Shack conference today. We're going to be talking about fabric and visualizing data. And then we have another four day of sessions tomorrow. Hopefully we'll see you guys at another session before the conference ends. Thanks for joining us. And hopefully we'll see you guys again uh, before Friday evening.